The Future City competition is heating up as teams move from the brainstorm phase to the design phase and get one step closer to building their lunar cities of the future. Stick around as we check in with a new team and talk to a working engineer to learn all about the engineer design process. This year's competition is a year like no other. Student teams are having to deal with the challenges of designing a city from scratch, on top of remote learning and not always being able to collaborate with peers and educators in person. But like anything, there are pros and cons. And one of the positive outcomes to this year's pivot to a virtual competition is that it's much easier to connect with teams from all over the country. So let's strap in and check out our next team out of Albany, New York, to see how their lunar city is taking shape. My name is Sujata Kadapa and I am a professor of biology at uh, Hudson Valley Community College uh, here in Troy, New York. Our team here is Suki City. We are an independent team because all of our team members are from different schools. I would like to introduce Surya Bomasani, Teju Banuru, Surabi Krishnan, Tanya Kamraj, Harry Yoganathan and Lucas Zhang. I was involved in the Future City program last year. This year, again, I wanted to do the same. I wanted to uh, go through the school. Unfortunately, because of the COVID uh, ch challenges, uh, that was a little bit difficult to make that happen. I asked my daughter to reach out to some of her friends and see if they would be interested, and thankfully they were. Our general idea was like a very futuristic um, city on the moon. We were thinking like a hundred years ahead, we would build this city. So we were just thinking about all the futuristic technology we could uh, use and improve on. We did a little bit of research and then each of us were assigned a topic and we did most of our research based on those topics and then it carried out later on. I think the research phase is important because once you have a problem, you need to figure out ways of how to solve that problem. You can't just go straight away into solving the problem after you actually get it. You have to actually think about it and actually research about ways you can. We would just put on Google Slides our ideas and decide whether the ideas were reasonable or not. For example, we had the problem of how we would give oxygen to the residents of Suki City. So we decided that we could use um, moon dust because like 40 to like 45 percent of moon dust was oxygen. So we would do electrolysis on that and we could extract oxygen from the moon dust and give, give it to everyone in Suki City. We also had the problem of meteoroid strikes because on the moon, meteoroids hit pretty often. So in our city, we're gonna be using geodesic domes, which are sturdier than normal domes. They have like a triangular structure, which helps them withstand more weight. And the dome will actually go under the surface of the moon so that our people can be more safe. I think the judges will appreciate our hard work and what we got done so far. Hard work will like always pay off in the end. So overall, I'm very excited and I really hope we can win this year. Each year, the Future City competition engages more than 45,000 middle school students using the engineering design process. It's a way for engineers and problem solvers to organize their ideas and then design, build, and test their products and processes. It's a real world learning experience for Future City participants and something they can apply to future challenges in school, work, and life. To get a better sense for exactly how the engineering design process works, I checked in with senior production engineer at Shell, Jonathan Daniels. Could you describe what you do in your career? The role I'm in actually right now is actually called subsurface coordinator. So what I do is I have a team of geologists, petrophysical engineers, and um, reservoir engineers. And what we do is we look at a set of land and say how many wells do we want to drill, where is the pipeline going to go to essentially the people's homes, and how are we going to who we're going to sell it to. That's kind of what my team does. 
Could you describe what you do uh, at your job on a day-to-day -day basis? Like, what's your routine? I probably would get into the office around 7 a.m. And first thing I would do is check my email, make sure nothing's going on that's bad. The other thing I'll do is projects. And the projects that I typically have are these kind of big developments. And so our problems are, okay, how can we do this in a safe way? And so we have a project and how can we make um, a well-designed safer? Yeah, and then I end around probably five o'clock and then uh, make my way home. Uh, it's kind of a typical day for me. The engineer design process is something that Future City students uh, use all the time. Could you go through the steps and uh, explain how it works? You'll see this no matter where you go, especially in engineering. So the first thing is identifying what the problem is. So if our problem is we're on the moon and people keep jumping over the assembly line, okay, that's our problem. The next thing you need to do is research. The world is changing all the time. You can't say you're the smartest person, especially in that topic. So you have to research to go all over the place and say, okay, what have people said about this topic before? Now you've done your research, you can brainstorm solutions. Now you've got to get broad, don't knock down ideas. And, you know, get it all out there. So people keep launching over the assembly line. Okay, we can tether them down. You can have booster packs, anti-gravity chamber, something like that, where people can just work in, whatever. Get it all out there. The next is design. You design what that actually is going to look like. Put it on paper. Start to, you know, draw your calculations. This is when you start to get your calculator out there. And now that you have a good design, everyone in your team says, this looks good. The next is to build. You build it up. Start to look exactly how you want it to design. Then never trust that first build. <laughs> because the first thing you gotta do after you build it is you need to test. You need to test and test and test what you've built. I mean, you, you've done Future City before, like mm -hmm. the first time, man. If you like compare the final one to your first one, completely different, right? You're like, the first one was like, that was trash. Like, yeah, because what you thought it was good at first. That is key because don't assume you've done so well designing that your design is perfect. When you come into the real world, it's never perfect. Once you test it, now you need to share it. So you need to convince them that all the work that you've done is going to do exactly what you designed it to do. You can have all of the brains in the world, but if you can't communicate your design, it's for not. Because would you, I mean, if I was like, hey, it's, it's going to work, just tether in. Like, would you do it? I would. I'd probably have to like, hold on, just, just to be sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you have any uh, final advice for uh, Future City teams this year? I was a judge for Future City um, in 2020, before pandemic. I would say be creative. Don't hold back. Try to do things that are interesting to you. Don't be constrained. Let your imagination go someplace where it's gonna be interesting and then come together for that perfect way to you know, put it onto the paper. That's what we need in the next phase of engineering. I mean, the world is changing so rapidly. You know, just because we've done that way before, we need to stop thinking of things that way. How you guys are going to lead and in go into the future is, is key that you guys can think outside the box. Stick around next week as we continue our journey to the moon, as our teams start to build their lunar cities. But wait, Maya, how are we supposed to get to the moon? Uh, I guess we'll have to find someone who knows how to fly our rocket. Well, good thing I know astronaut Ricky Arnold, who actually flew on the International Space Station. Well, that's convenient. We'll check in with him to get a first-hand take on what it's like to build a city in space. No, I wouldn't want to miss that for the world. You get it? <laughs> See you next time.